Now the best topic ever, geodatabases. Let's learn a little bit about geodatabases and setting them up. So I'm in our catalog and I've got a blank folder that I'm going to create my geodatabase in. Now again, there's several types of geodatabases. For most projects, you're going to have two main options, a file geodatabase or an SDE or spatial database engine database or an enterprise geodatabase. That's kind of an advanced topic that uh, um, I probably won't end up covering. So let's stick to the file geodatabase and learn how to set that up and use it. So anywhere in here, I, ca I can right click and I can go to new, say file geodatabase. I can go to lab four, say file, new file geodatabase or up here in file. Uh, each of these are contextual. So depending on what I have selected, I'll have different options. And Mark's still thinking, yay, new file geodatabase. So this is the empty container um, that I can rename. Let's call it park. So it's going to be a park file geodatabase. Now if I look at that in the file explorer, this is going to look like a folder with a lot of crazy named stuff on the inside. In general, we do not want to touch anything inside that folder, but you can move that whole folder around. Again, it's always best to use our catalog to do that. Now when I click on the geodatabase and go inside of it, there's nothing there yet. Inside here, I can fill this with feature classes, tables, and so forth. Um, but in order to do topology later, I'm going to want another container called a feature data set. This has the same coordinate system for every single feature class, um, the same uh, tolerances, and it'll be necessary when we get to topology later and, and imposing topology. So I'm going to create one. So again, I'm going to right click here, go to new, uh, and go to feature data set. And I tend to call these the name of either the theme or the um, the coordinate system that you use. So I'm going to call this MAD83 UTM 16. Uh, so we'll call this Wisconsin Transverse Mercator. Uh, it's going to ask me my coordinate system that I want to use. <clears throat> I'm going to go down here to my vanilla uh, Wisconsin coordinate system, county system, state. Always uh, fun finding these. Wisconsin transverse Mercator meters. No vertical coordinate system. And these XY tolerances, these are somewhat important. The, the defaults are really small, they're really tiny. Uh, so we've got uh, 10, 100, thousandths of a meter. That's probably a little bit um, too small. I want some of these vertices that are really close together to be snapped. So you can see, like, all right, one centimeter, 10 centimeters. Uh, I want to do one centimeter. So change this just a little bit for the project. I don't have M and Z values here, but I'm going to still set the um, tolerances. OK, so now I've got a feature data set that, again, if I go inside, is empty. Now, before I create a feature class, uh, you want to think about when you're designing your database um, and your attributes that are going to go with your feature class, uh, the domains that I might want to use. So I want to set these before I start creating feature classes. So I'm going to go back to the main container here for the geo database. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to properties. And it's in here that I can set. Um, or, or look at some general properties for the, the file geo database, and then set domains. So for my park, let's say I've got some roads, and I'm going to set some speed limits. So there's two types of domains. Let's look at both. Uh, so I'm going to call this speed limit, uh, and then <clears throat> uh, range of speed limits in my park. And in this case, speed limits, I could probably be more efficient by storing that as a short integer. Uh, it's a range. The range is going to limit my attributes to a certain set of values. And this is applicable to integers or um, floating point. So I'm going to say, all right, smallest speed limit. I can't have zero as a speed limit. The smallest I can have is, let's say, 15. And the max I'm going to allow in my park is 55. All right. OK, so I've got my range domain set, and I can keep adding domains here. Now notice as I switch between the two, these values down here are going to change. So the selection up here sets the properties and the coded values. So let's do a coded domain. Um, and let's say we're going to have a, um, 
a uh, trail type or a trail surface maybe. And this is types of trail surfaces. And that's going to be a text field. So I'm going to set this up as a text. I'm going to use coded values here. Um, and then I'm going to have a code and description. So I'm going to say dirt, dirt covered trail, gravel, gravel covered trail, unpaved. Paved trail and maybe cover my butt and other type of surface. Okay, so these are the options that I'm going to get for that text field for my trail surface. So these are the domains that are going to limit the type of attributes that I have within um, the feature classes that I'm going to create in a moment. All right, that was part one. Stick around for the exciting part two. Thank you.